Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses Islamic duties and practices by his eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi Hafadullah. I'm your host, Mosin Shah, and joining me is Sheikh Ali Ma'ash. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikhna. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. How are you? Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah, it's good to see you. Sheikhna, let's move our conversation forward now and let's talk about a topic which is quite dear to everybody, quite important. And that is the topic of khums, which is some sort of tax or charity. Could you please explain more on what is khums? Inshallah. A'udhu billah as-sami'an alim min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tayibin al-tahirin. Basically khums means in Arabic one-fifth. And it is related to the payment of the, the surplus of the annual expenses of the one in which remains at the end of the year. So when that individual, uh, a tradesman, um, a salesman, a teacher, um, an employee in a company, even a student, for example, when they leave out with um, a surplus of, let's say, whatever amount is left by the end of the year, then they have to pay one-fifth of the remaining uh, of the income which is left by the, end, by the end of that specific date uh, of the year. And of course, Khums mentioned in the Holy Quran and also in numerous hadith of the Holy Prophet and Ahl Bayt with this regard. And we begin with the Book of Allah, the Holy Quran. In this, the, the chapter 8, verse 41, Allah states, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ مَا غَنِمْتُمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَأَنَّ لِلَّهِ خُمُسَهُ وَلِلْرَسُولِ وَلِذِ الْقُرْبَى وَلِيَتَامَى وَلِمَسَاكِينَ وَابْنَ السَّبِيلِ Know that whatever you gained and acquired as a means of profit. And this eye is not only for the war, the ghanaim and the acquiring of the war um, leftovers. As you know, the, if there is a war between Muslims and, and non-Muslims, and the Muslims take over and they win the war, and they can take the leftovers of the, um, uh, of the enemy side, let's say swords, um, um, shields, horses, and so forth. Whatever is left over, they have the right to take them. So the ghanimtum, or whatever you acquire, is not to do only with uh, the war case. It is also applied to the uh, whatever we acquire, such as the incomes and, and profits. So the Holy Quran states, whatever you, um, you acquire and com come by, um, a fifth of that, of that, or khumus of that, one fifth of that, which is 20%, should go to Lillah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the cause of Allah, and to the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, and to the, um, the relatives, and the orphans, and the, the ones who are in need, and the, the, the ones who have difficulty in uh, gaining uh, money through income, for example, and those who are stranded in their trouble, they lose their, let's say, wealth, and they've got nothing to go, be able to go back to their country and city. So the khumus specified for those groups. I'll mention, some, inshallah, in detail about uh, each category. And of course, when it comes to the khumus, um, it is a wajib act. It is a wajib and obligatory act in the Furu' al-Din as we read that we have 10 of Furu' al-Din, uh, the branches of religion. Now one of them is Khums. So you have Salah, 
uh, fasting, you have hajj, hajj zakat. you have zakat, and you have khums as well. So this is one of the uh, very important wajibat within and beside the other the wajibat in the Islam religion. So it's important that we consider these ahkam, that we try to perform it as we perform in our salah. When we submit to Islam as a divine religion, we have to make sure that we apply all the procedures and the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of them is khumus. So there's no excuse for somebody to come up and say, well, I'm paying charities, uh, you know, I've got different payments, monthly payments, I've been taking care of the orphans, uh, but I don't want to pay khums. Khums is something separate than these charity payments. This is a wajib payment. You must, and you're obliged to pay this amount of khums. It's only every year, not every month. So you set a date, and then you have to calculate your uh, leftovers from the incomes you gained, the surplus, whatever you spent during the year. Whatever is left then, you paid only 20% of it. That's it, basically, once a year. So it is a wajib. We must perform this act. We must set a date uh, during the year, uh, choose a date, so we can pay the khumus uh, at the end of that uh, year. Is it fair to say it's a sort of an Islamic tax? Is that the right word to use, Islamic tax? Yes, you can use the word, but it's actually, uh, as it says, khums. So one-fifth of, of the khums. You can say it's a tax, but in overall, uh, the, the procedure is similar to the tax system that mm -hmm. you have to pay, as we have in, yes. in the UK, 20% of your income, for yeah. example. Some, some more sometimes. Yeah. Uh, sometimes more, exactly. Or 17.5% for or the VAT, items, you, yeah. VAT, for example. But this is a religious and divinely, uh, let's say, tax payment. So, mm. And it's only once a year. Yes. But compared to the other payments, we have to pay the income tax every month. Yeah. Uh, VAT everything, on everything we buy, for example, purchased. every service we uh, purchase, for example, there's a certain amount of uh, VAT or tax should be paid. Mm -hmm. So this is more simpler and straightforward. That's only when you have a surplus and extra income left at the end of the year and you just pay it. That's it. 20% only. And we'll inshallah discuss uh, that. Where does this 20% goes exactly? As the Holy Quran mentions uh, where this money will go, but in overall there's another uh, categories to find out where exactly the money goes. Ahsent, Shaykhna, excellent. Um, you mentioned the Quranic ayah. Do you not have any hadith to uh, discuss khums? I have three hadith or narrations with regard to the khums. The first hadith is uh, narrated by Ibn Abi Umair. عن سماع قال سألت أبي الحسن أي الإمام الكاظم عليه السلام عن الخمس فقال now سماع he asks the Imam al Kadhim عليه السلام the seventh Imam of أهل البيت عليهم السلام جميعا with regard to the خمس in other words defining the خمس what خمس is the Imam سلام الله عليه responded في كل ما أفاد الناس من قليل أو كثير خمس is to be paid for whatever the one and the individual acquires and gains be it a small amount or a or large amount من قليل أو كثير even if it's one pound, one dollar you still have to pay that 20% of خمس of that one dollar which is 20 cent or 20 pence in pounds you still have to pay it, even if it's a very small amount. This is an obligatory act. You must fulfill the requirement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This 20% in which we have to pay uh, towards the haqq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a must, and that doesn't belong to us. This money, this 20% excess of the amount, must be paid uh, towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the cause of Allah, the Almighty. The second hadith, a man from Iran, he writes to the Imam al-Rada alayhi salam. With regard to the 
hummus. He wants to take some kind of exemption and try to get away from not paying the hummus. The Imam Salamullah Alayh, he responds in his letter to this person, to this tradesman in Iran. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna Allah wasi'un kareem. I'll just mention briefly the, the hadith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is generous. وَإِنَّ الْخُمْسَ عَوْنُنَا عَلَى دِينَنَا The khums payment is a support on our religion, on the faith of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This religion requires people to spend. You know, you have to build mosques, Husayniya, Islamic centers, uh, prepare the, for example, programs, um, occasions, the sad and the happy occasions. All these requires that uh, the, those who are in charge of spreading the religion to be able to spend. You have the jihad, for example, the war. When the enemy attacks, then you have to have the right tools, the right weapon to, de to defend yourself. Where does that money come from, for example? So you have to have some kind of means of income. Is it like um, social welfare? You know, everyone kind of puts you know, uh, money aside to help pay for what the government wants to pay for, for example, widows, orphans, uh, Policing, firemen, military, social exactly. welfare. Yes, exactly. That's what we really need to um, consider because at the end of the day, if there's a, let's say, as we have today, the maraja and the system of um, the followers and the marja, and then you have the hawzat and you have uh, the majalis, you have to have some kind of uh, savings to be able to fund these institutions. Otherwise, how could you have, for example, uh, new lecturers, new jurists, and maraja? You have to fund these uh, uh, organizations to be able to continue with the da'wah and propagating Islam religion to the world. So this is kind of support towards uh, the needs of, the, uh, of, of religion in terms of propagating uh, Islam, in terms of even helping all orphans, for example, been building hospitals, schools, and so forth. Then the Imam says, فَلَا تَزْوُهُ عَنَّا وَلَا تَحْرَمُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ دُعَاءَنَا مَا قَدِرْتُمْ عَلَيْهِ The Imam says, do not prevent the payment of hummus to us. Because this will cause that you don't get the dua of the Imam. No. You get the dua of the Imam when you pay the hummus mm -hmm. and try to find from the narrations and other sources that is there a, a place where the Imams would say, if you pray, we'll be, read dua for you. We'll pray for you. If you go to Hajj, we'll pray for you. If you, uh, let's say, uh, you do something wajib, read the Quran, we'll pray for you. We'll do, read the dua for you. The exception is here. The Imam says that if you pay the khumus, we'll read the dua for you. We'll pray for you. And who prays for you? The Imam al-Ma'asum alayhi salam. And today we have the Imam al-Hujjah, Ajjallah Farajah Sharif, who would pray for us if we pay the khumus and fulfill the duty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the Imam says, فَإِنْ إِخْرَاجُهُ Now the Imam gives uh, the good results and the benefits of paying hummus. Number one, when you pay hummus, you'd get more, more incomes and rewards. So the more you pay hummus, the more you will get benefit, the more you will get as a result of rizq and sustenance. So in other words, when you, when you give hummus, your sustenance will increase, your rizq will increase. Miftah rizqakum. Then the Imam says, Wa tamhis dunubikum. Also, the khumus will purify your sins and remove your sins. That's one of another benefit, spiritual benefit. We have sins. How do you purify them? By paying khumus. One of the uh, means and, and ways and methods. Then the Imam says, وَلَيْسَ الْمُسْلِمْ مَنْ أَجَابَ بِالْلِسَانِ وَخَالِفَ بِالْقَلْبِ وَالسَّلَامِ 
the Imam says Muslim is not the one who only responds by his tongue. And uh, rejects by his heart. In other words, the Muslim is not only in theory. You have to be practical. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to participate in the society, in the community, by yourself. Amwalikum wa anfusikum, as the Holy Quran states, that you sacrifice yourself uh, by your wealth and yourself as well. You put some time that you spread the knowledge of Islam to others, for example, practically. That you pay money, you donate, or you pay khumus, which is a wajib. So these are all acts in which we must fulfill it. The wajib ones, of course, must be. And the mustahab, we try to increase the mustahabbat and the desirable acts. The next and last hadith, Ali ibn Ibrahim, an Abi, he, those two important narrators of Ahl al-Bayt alayhi salam قال كنت عند أبي جعفر الثاني أي الإمام الجواد عليه السلام So the father of Ali ibn Ibrahim was in the presence of Imam al-Jawad عليه السلام إذ دخل عليه صالح بن محمد بن سهل a man with the name of Salih son of Muhammad son of Sahl he came to visit the Imam فقال يا سيدي اجعلني من عشرة آلاف في حل O oh my master, exempt me from paying the khumus, which is 10,000 I have to pay. Uh, either it's a dinar or dirham. He's got 10,000 uh, to pay for the khumus, but it seems to be that he wants to get exemption from the imam, mm -hmm. not to pay them. And it's wajib for him, on him. He seems to be a merchant, a trademan. فَإِنِّي أَنْفَقْتُهَا I spend them all. So he spent them the money, the khumus, which is supposed to be paid to the Imam alayhi salam, which is a wajib. He came and he wants exemption while he spent them before he asked the Imam. He spent them first and then he came to ask the Imam for permission. فَقَالَ لَهُ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ Imam responded, أَنْتَ فِي حل. You're exempted, خلاص. you can go. فلما خرج صالح when this man with the name of صالح he left قال أبو جعفر عليه السلام إمام الجواد عليه السلام he turned to the father of علي بن إبراهيم one of his companions and he told him أتراه ظن أني أقول لا أفعل do you think that he was waiting for me to say that no you're not exempted والله ليسألنهم الله يوم القيامة عن ذلك سؤالا حثيثا The Imam swears to God and he says I swear to God that Allah will ask them about not paying the khumus with emphasis emphasizing on the question you know stressing on the question why didn't you pay you know it was wajib you know that you were able to pay it with no excuses you're a merchant you're a tradesman you have no financial hardships, but you didn't pay it. Allah will ask them. So, khumus payment briefly is to purify our wealth, our life, to cleanse ourselves and souls from the sins we committed, and also to increase the sustenance and the rizq more and more, brings more blessings and barakah to the one's household. And of course, um, it will protect us from uh, any near or future losses. MashaAllah, Shaykh it's, 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 it's funny how we don't really talk much about Khums, uh, mainly because maybe we feel that we're not obliged to pay for it, living in such an expensive area, place in, in, in Europe. However, you know, the hadith that you mentioned shows you know, the emphasis and the importance or actually calculating your homes and make sure that you are paying it and that there's so much thawab and there's so much reward in actually paying this and it, it's used for you know an Islamic purpose it's not that oh you just give the homes and that's it no it's actually used to benefit other people in other centers mashallah Shaykh that's all we've got time for so thank you very much Shaykh and thank you to all the viewers for joining us on Ihqam SOS inshallah we'll have 
a new discussion in the next episode. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.